This is Scientific American's 60 Second Science. I'm Joanna Thompson. In 2018, a group of astronomers from Yale discovered something odd. Two galaxies that had almost no dark matter. The observation caused a commotion in scientific circles because it seemed to fly in the face of everything that astrophysicists thought they knew about galaxy formation. But researchers may have just discovered the mechanism that makes these so-called dark matter deficient galaxies possible. In astronomy, matter comes in two flavors, dark matter and baryons. Yeah, baryons is a fancy way of saying regular matter. That's Betsy Adams, an astronomer at Asteron, the Netherlands Institute for Radio Astronomy, who was not involved in the research. Unlike baryonic matter, dark matter is invisible. Because the point of dark matter uh, is that we can't see it. You know, there's no radiation from it. We don't observe it with our telescopes. What we observe is the, the baryons, the regular stuff. And so to infer the presence of dark matter is we look for its effects gravitationally. Dark matter acts like the unseen glue that holds galaxies together. Around 85% of an average galaxy consists of dark matter. And without it, astronomers think that most galaxies wouldn't have enough gravity to take shape. Stumbling across a galaxy without dark matter is a little like finding a hurricane with no wind. So where the heck did the Yale astronomers' dark matterless galaxies come from? That question caught the attention of Jorge Moreno, an astronomer at Pomona College in Claremont, California. Many of us were freaking out. It's like the, there is a major challenge to our paradigm. Moreno is part of a team working on an expansive, highly detailed computer program designed to simulate merging galaxies. So this is a, a, what we call a cosmological simulation. It's a big, you simulate a big chunk of the universe. You create a, a mini universe in your computer. The simulation he works with follows the standard model of physics, which is rich in dark matter. But not every physicist is convinced that the standard model is correct. And there was another camp of people who said, you know what, it's time to just get rid of this model. This dark matter, this idea is a nice idea, but it's not really consistent with observations. It's it's time to put it in the bin and and think about something else. Maybe we need to modify the laws of physics or something like that. Haibo Yu, a theoretical particle physicist at the University of California, Riverside, fell into that camp. So actually, me and my collaborators, my group, we, we wrote a paper saying that there's an indication maybe the new physics, which beyond the standard kind of dark matter theory is needed. It's better to explain the, these two galaxies. But Moreno's simulation offers a solution without throwing away conventional physics. Initially, his team was focused on massive galaxies. But when they looked more closely at the simulation's tiny dwarf galaxies, a surprise popped out. Seven of them lacked dark matter. Each of these low dark matter dwarves orbited a supermassive galaxy the way a moon might orbit a planet. Moreno found that the seven galaxies hadn't formed without dark matter. Instead, their dark matter had been gradually stripped away as they crossed paths with their supermassive counterpart. We didn't design the simulation to find for these things. It, 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 they just appeared. It preserves the paradigm we we basically say you don't need to throw away the idea of dark matter because we use a simulation with dark matter and we were able to create galaxies without it. For you, it was an exciting find. It's a remarkable work, I should say. I mean, it's a, it's a great success, I would say. Uh, congratulations to the authors. And also, the, their result uh, actually do not, not exclude the possibility to have new physics. The next step, according to Adams of Asteron, is to verify Moreno's results with observations. And the authors of the paper did something that I very much liked, which is they made a prediction. They said, we think that up to 30% of central galaxies in this mass range should have dark matter deficient satellite galaxies. So it would be a lot of work observationally to do that, but you could then go test that. And for Moreno, the research takes on a personal dimension. I have indigenous roots especially on the bo- along the border of the U.S. and Mexico. And I have a friend, he's a professor of physics in Texas, and he's Cherokee. And he told me that the Cherokee tribe has seven clans. So I asked, I told him, hey, can you ask the elders if they give me permission to use their the names? And they said yes. He named the seven dark matter deficient galaxies after these clans. Bird, deer, long hair, paint, wild potato, wolf, and blue. 
the reason this resonates with me, and I think it would resonate with any person of indigenous ancestry, is because that's basically what happened to us. Like, uh, we, in the process of colonization, we lost our language, we lost our traditions. Like, I don't know what my music is. I have a European name, I speak European languages, but we're, I'm still here. And we're still here. And I feel like these galaxies were like that. They didn't assimilate and they weren't destroyed. They confronted the Goliath and they're still here and they're surviving. For 60 Second Science, I'm Joanna Thompson. 